Okay, hi. Now, in this video, we're going to cover the topic of cloning. And so, by now, you've already had a look at reproduction. And cloning is a type of reproduction in which we will produce a genetically identical offspring. So, cloning will produce genetically identical. Because remember, if you have two clones, but one of them is not given enough food or it's grown in the wrong environment, then it won't look identical. It might not grow as much and so on, but genetically it will be identical and that's what a clone is. Okay, now something which is quite simple to clone really is a plant. We can clone animals, but that's slightly more difficult and we'll come on to that afterwards. But plants are fairly simple to clone. And the simplest way of doing this is by taking what is known as cuttings. So cuttings. And this is where we will take a section of the plant. A lot of the time it's the stem. So let's say we have this fully grown plant, uh, which has got these leaves on it and blah, blah, blah. This would do like that. So this is a fully fledged plant. Now what we can do is we can take part of the stem. So we chop off part of it. Let's say we just chop off this part up here. It's just a different color. Here we go. Let's say we chop off this part here, like that. We take a plant pot, or we put it into the ground, it doesn't really matter. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant that section. So we take that section, and that is put into our pot or our ground, whatever we're gonna be planting. Okay, now, if you remember in the hormone videos, I mentioned that we can use hormones in what's known as rooting powder. Rooting powder. And what this does is it allows the growth of the roots. And so this rooting powder, of course, contains plant growth hormones, and it allows the plant to grow. And so we provide the right conditions, so the right amount of water, um, the right amount of sunlight or light that we've provided, and then the plant will grow into a clone of the original. So eventually, ta-da, so eventually, what we're gonna have is an exact clone of the original plant. So this, cl this plant has been cloned by taking a cutting, growing it in the right conditions, and now we have an identical plant. Now this is useful because if we have a plant which has desirable characteristics, for example, one that we use is a conifer tree. If a conifer tree is exactly the right size and shape that it should be, and it's also got characteristics such as resistant to um, different infections, we want to clone that plant and sell loads of the same plant. So we clone loads of those conifer trees and we produce a lot of them with all the same characteristics. Okay, so that's the most simple method of cloning. It's also the oldest. We've been using cuttings for a long time. And something that's a bit more recent is a uh, method known as tissue culture. Tissue culture. Now this is still on the subject of plants. We haven't moved on to animals yet. We can produce plants by tissue culture. And what we do with tissue culture is we take a tiny amount of a plant. Let's just say here, we just take this tiny little square here and we will get plant cells. So we'll get plant cells. This is just a rough idea. It might look something like this. So I've got these plant cells. Plant cells. If we then add some plant hormones, so plus plant hormones, we will end up with a fair few of these guys. So there we go, we've added some plant hormones and now we have multiplied these plant cells. And what we then do is we add some plant hormones, some, so some different plant hormones. So plant hormones, these aren't the same as the plant hormones we added before. These are a different set of hormones, but you don't need to know what they are. And all of these cells, so this one and this one, and this one will go on to form some new plants. And these plants will all be uh, clones of the original. So I'm just drawing them. Obviously this isn't the same as the original one. It doesn't really look like a plant at all. But um, this 
will be a clone of the original and that will occur for each cell. So we get these clones of your original plant, but we can produce loads of them. Because cells are so small, it means that we can take individual cells, produce plants out of them, and there is gonna be a massive number of cells in our small um, snippet that we've taken off of the plant. This means we can potentially, sorry about the noise in the background there, someone's obviously had their car stolen. Um, this means that potentially, as long as we have the right conditions and the right amount of nutrients in order to allow it, we can grow thousands of plants. So we can grow thousands of clones from a small piece of your plant. So you take one small piece and you can produce loads and loads and loads of identical plants. This guarantees that we can produce loads of them all with the characteristics we want, whereas with cuttings, we have to do the cutting procedure for each new plant. And obviously we can't cut a plant into millions of little pieces because that's not really viable for us. So we're not gonna get too many clones out of cuttings, whereas with tissue culture, we can get loads and loads and loads of clones all in one go. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Let's skip ahead now and take a look at animal cloning. Okay, so animal cloning is something that's a lot more recent than cuttings anyway. Uh, tissue culture is fairly recent, but animal cloning is definitely uh, a very recent phenomenon. And basically, what we are trying to do is produce as much of our top quality cattle or, or whatever animals it is that we are farming as we can. And to go through the process, I'm going to use cows as an example. Now let's pretend, for example, that this cow is really high quality cow. It produces a lot of milk. And also when this cow is butchered, it produces great tasting steak. Well, it's not good enough for us just to get sort of one or two calves from this cow because that's really how many calves you're going to produce from a cow in a normal um, lifespan. So we want to produce loads more because we want to conserve this cow's genetics. So what we're going to do is we're going to add fertility hormones. Fertility hormones. To this cow. Now this makes the cow produce loads of eggs equals loads of eggs. Loads is not the scientific term of course it produces multiple eggs but that's fine we produce many eggs and we then want to fertilize these eggs. So we've got the eggs uh, they're just gonna look we're just gonna draw them like this for now. So you've got all these eggs now we need to fertilize them, and so we're going to take a bull, which is a male cow, uh, who also has great characteristics, and we're going to use that bull's sperm to fertilize these eggs. And we either do that inside the cow, so these eggs might be in here, or they might have been taken out of the cow and been put in a lab, and we'll do that in a lab. But once we fertilize them, so these... We then fertilize, fertilize with bull, remember we want to make it as good a bull as we can, bull sperm, so you pick the big strong bull, fertilize with bull sperm, and we then collect the embryos, because this forms embryos. and we collect those embryos. So we collect embryos. And so now let's say for example, these slightly bigger circles represent an embryo. We'll just draw three here. We have three embryos here. And well, what are we gonna do with those? We can't grow the embryos into a cow in a lab. They need to be inside a mother. And that's fine, what we can do is we can take a less useful cow. So let's say that we've got this rubbish cow here, this cow's not any good. This one down here also is no good, bit of a rubbish cow. And also you've got this cow here who's no good either, doesn't produce much milk. Uh, this cow doesn't even look like it's got a bum, so yeah, this is not a very good cow. So basically, first of all, we add hormones to the cows, to the not very good cows, that we want to get pregnant. 
and this will prepare them for pregnancy. So we add hormones to these cows to prepare them um, and basically trick their body into thinking that they're about to become naturally pregnant. And so we place the embryos into these cows. But remember, the embryos have come from the super cow. Well, that's way too far. The super cow up here. Okay, so when these cows uh, give birth, they are not actually giving birth to their natural uh, related children. Their offspring are going to be genetically completely dissimilar from all three of these cows. The offspring are going to be genetically related to the original mother and of course to the father bull who we picked. And so the offspring will be, if you like, the natural children of those mother and father. And so we will get offspring. Now I've used the same drawing as the mother but these are not identical to the mother. These offspring are actually clones not of the mother or the father but of each other. So they are clones of each other. And it's just like if we mated the mother and the father. The reason we do this and we don't just mate the mother and the father is because this way we could even use something like 20 mothers or more and we could get 20 calves whereas if we just mated the mother and father we'd get one or two calves at a time. And so we have way more calves with good characteristics. They are not identical to the mother or the father but we have mixed their gene pool up in the hope that we will get strong healthy calves who produce a lot of milk um, and obviously make good tasting, high quality meat. What we can also do is, you've probably heard of genetic modification, so GM, genetic modification, we can produce GM embryos. And what this means is that we can modify the cow in a way that maybe its milk is going to produce um, a useful compound. So milk may produce something like a compound or a medicine. Medicine. An example of that could be an antibiotic. Maybe there's an antibiotic that we need to produce, but it can only really be produced in a living organism. So we genetically modify the cows to produce it, and because they always make milk, we'll get loads of the antibiotic in the milk without having to do a lot of complex chemistry in the lab. Okay, so that's something that's very useful as well. It's obviously controversial because we don't know, you know, no one's got the right answer. Is genetic modification right? Are we going against God? And so on. But that is something which is open for debate. What is not open for debate is that we can produce useful substances by doing it. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there. Uh, in the next video, we're going to cover adult cell cloning. And so this is something even more recent and even more difficult. Um, but I hope this has been useful. Please do send me an email via the link below if you have any questions or comment in the box and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.